Okay, so what we're going to be starting on today is how to do a mold conversion. But when we do these mold conversions, we're using a tool that I created uh, probably about seven or eight years ago. Um, you would see other people will have a mole island. They'll say, hey, there's a mole island right there. And this mole island could go off to the mass. It could go off to particles. Or it could go off to the volume of a gas. Okay? That's what they do for their mole island. And then they might say, these are the factors you use for it. I found that that was something that confused some of my kids. So I created a different version of it with the anticipation of it going towards stoichiometry in second semester. So this is the Mo Island that I gave you guys. This Mo Island was before this curriculum. This curriculum, does, the district has determined that we have to teach it to you in proportions. So I had to make sure that I created something that would actually allow for this Mo Island to still be used in mold conversions. So that's why I gave you guys these hand cards here. Okay. The thing about these hand cards is if you get two highlighters, a blue and an orange, it will help you to immediately set things up. Does that make sense, everybody? So I'm going to show you how that works as well. So this one here, we're going to hold off for a little bit because I want to teach you about the map first. I want you guys to look at this strike map like it's an, or excuse me, this Mo Island, like it's an actual map. Anytime we're going somewhere, we're driving somewhere, which side of the road do we drive on? We drive on the right, right? So if I'm at Volume Island and I'm leaving Volume Island, I'm going to be on the right-hand side. So if you notice, this is all set up like the roads would be. Whatever island I'm on, if I center myself, if I, if I organize this or set this up to where it's it's me where the map is then every time i'm leaving it's going to be right the main island or the capital of this group of islands is our mo island the mo island is what everything else goes through okay you notice i can't go from mass to particles i can't go from particles to the volume anytime i'm going to one of these outer islands i must go through mo island first okay so that's going to be the difference between a one-step mold conversion or a two-step mold conversion? Am I going just to moles or am I going from moles to something else? Anytime it's the mole island is one, either the given or the wanted, it's going to be a one-step. So if I ask myself, what do they give me? What do they want? If one of the units is moles, it's going to be a, a one-step conversion. If I ask, what do they give me, what do they want, and neither one of the unit is in mole, then I should know that that's going to be a two-step mole conversion. Is everybody cool with that? Okay, so when we are doing these, we need to understand how to use it. Anytime I'm dealing with volume, volume automatically should be, you got to get this one straight in your head. It's just only for a gas. The volume is only for a gas. And they tell you the factor that one mole of any gas at STP is equal to 22.4 liters. It doesn't matter what the gas is, what the formula of the gas is. It doesn't matter at all. One mole of any gas is going to be 22.4 liters. Okay? So what is STP? It is the standard... Temperature and pressure. So what is that? What they're saying is there is a reporting amount where we want to report things from where it's, where it's consistent. So anybody anywhere in the world can recreate these conditions and they will see the same results. Does that make sense to everybody? So they had to come up with a standard that everybody could base their, they could, if you have a, a climate controlled lab, you can set it up to where it's going to be exactly this temperature, exactly this pressure. And then you measure all your gases and balloons and they will all assume the same volume. It doesn't matter what it is. So what is the standard temperature and pressure? Well, 
it's derived from the freezing point of pure water under normal conditions at sea level. If I have pure water under normal conditions at sea level, the standard temperature that it's going to freeze is going to be zero degrees Celsius. Under normal conditions at sea level, the atmospheric pressure is one atmosphere. Okay. This is what this means, but you're never going to use it in a calculation in this class because we don't teach gas laws anymore. Okay, when we used to teach gas laws, we used to say, well, the temperature is this and the pressure is this. What would, it, how many moles would that be actually be? You can use the combined gas law to determine what it actually is. Okay, so this is just something that you're going to assume you're always at in this class. Because I cannot do volume unless I'm at STP. Does that make sense to everybody? Now, we do have factors on each bridge. Anytime I'm crossing a bridge, I'm using the factor on that bridge. So when I'm doing volume, if I'm coming from moles, and here's a little secret for anybody who wants to like get this stuck in their heads. Anytime I'm leaving Mole Island, I am going to be multiplying by the factor on that bridge. Anytime I'm going towards Mo Island, I will be dividing by the factor on that bridge. Does that make sense, everybody? So if I am going between liters and moles, the factor is always 22.4 liters. Does that make sense, everybody? We're all cooking the same chicken? What do I mean when I say factor? Well, if you were to go get help from Mrs. Masinski, she would say this factor is for every one mole of a gas at STP, there are 22.4 liters. That's how she would explain it to you, which is perfectly valid okay I personally got into science so I wouldn't have to write so much so I don't like to write this much and I want to be able to see that it is a conversion factor this explains it to you where this It gives me an immediate conversion factor. Okay. So for a gas in volume, these, this is how I would get my factor. Is everybody cool with that? Well, there's something else on this map that we've already talked about too. We've already talked about this factor right here. Avogadro's number. You guys have heard of that. You've seen it. We've done it in class the other day. Particles. We know that particles is the umbrella word for the smallest unit of any substance that still retains all the properties of that substance. So if I'm talking about the smallest unit of an add of an element that still retains all the properties of that element, I'm talking about an atom. If I'm talking about a covalent compound, the smallest unit of a covalent compound that still retains all the properties of that covalent compound is called a molecule. If I'm talking about an ionic compound, the smallest unit of an ionic compound that still retains all the properties of that ionic compound is called a formula unit, or Fu for short. So anytime I see atoms, molecules, Fu, or the word particles, I should know that this is the bridge I'm crossing. So I'm, I'm keying in here on the units that they're giving or the units that they want. That's going to determine my fat, my bridges that I'm crossing, which factors I'm going to use. So what would the factor for particles be? Again, I do not like to write. You can assume that how to write the, the for every statement for this. But for particles, I would say one mole of any substance is equal to
that equality sentence. And the reason that I use equality sentences is because I want you to see that this is a conversion factor. If I put one of these on top of the other and they're equal to each other, essentially I am dividing something by itself. And what is the value of anything divided by itself? It's just one. So I'm not changing the value when I use this as a conversion factor. I'm changing the unit it's being reported in. Value is the same because this divided by this is equal to one. Does that make sense? And then I'm multiplying by a factor of one. So all I'm doing is I'm changing the unit it's reported in. I'm not changing the value. Okay. For the last couple of days, we've been talking about molar mass. That's the factor that's over here. And that's why this set of islands is usually the hardest ones for people to get. It's the hardest one for people to do. And they get upset whenever they see that unit gram. Because anytime I see the unit gram, that means I must find the molar mass of that substance. Doesn't matter. Anytime I see the unit gram, I must find the molar mass of that substance. Because the factor of for mass is one mole of any substance is equal to its molar mass. Okay? Every substance has a different molar mass, so that means I can't use one number generically. The other two factors, the other two bridges, I'm not changing those numbers. It's always going to be 22.4 liters, or it's always going to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. That doesn't change. But the mass item is specific to the substance. Does that make sense, everybody? So let's do an example of how to use this. We're going to start by saying a student needs 1.75 mole of water for an experiment. How many grams must they measure? So I'm going to take this little hand card here, and I'm going to see that wherever it says unit wanted is blue. And wherever it says unit given is orange. Which do you think is given? A value given. There's a number there, right? So... This is what they give you. Notice how I highlighted it in orange here. Now it apply it looks just like this. So wherever that unit, that unit, wherever it's orange on this in my fun, in my uh, proportion, I need to have that unit there. However, I get there, I need that unit. It's going to be that unit. Okay, the white ones are different. The white ones, we're just. I'll show you that in a second. But the, the orange unit is always going to go, in this case, on the bottom. What is the unit that they want? What are they asking for? They're asking for grams. Okay? So I know that I have 1.75 moles. I know that they want to know how many grams that is. So... X is going on top. That's a num where the where the number value is is going to be X. It's always on top. If you put the X on bottom, which you can mathematically do, you can put the X anywhere on left or on the left side, on top or bottom, because then you're just cross multiplying and solving for that. But if you put the X on top, it will always line up with our mole island. Does that make sense, everybody? If you put the X on the bottom, it will not line up with mole island. It's going to look weird and different. Eventually, you will be doing that, that function, but it's not going to look the same. So, X grams, that's what they want, over the number given, 1.75, and the unit given, mole. The number given, unit given. See how that works? Now we're going to go into our proportion. What is the factor that we're changing this by? Well, I need to use the factor that has to do with those units. So mass is in grams. This is asking for grams and moles. So I'm using this factor right here. So I'm going to need to know what the molar mass of water is. Okay. So to find the molar mass of water, I have 
1.01 times 2 for the hydrogens. And then for the oxygen, I have 16.00 times 1. So this will be equal to 2.02 .02 over 16.00 or 18.02. This is going to be grams is equal to 1 mole. That's my factor. So we see how I did that? Instead of saying grams per mole, I say grams is equal to one mole. Same thing. It means the same thing mathematically. So on top, the unit given is grams. The unit wanted on bottom is mole. Now this side, the right side of a proportion comes from my equality sentence. What is the number that is attached to grams uh, from my equality sentence? So we're going to put the 18.02 grams. What is the number that's attached to moles from this equality sentence? No. 1.75 is not in this equality sentence. 18.02 is not equal to one mole. It's not equal to... Uh, 1.75 is not equal to 18.02. What is equal to 18.02? Just one mole. So... You're always going to have a 1 over here. So you can skip that function. Totally skip it. So all I'm doing is I'm going to take the 1.75 times the 18.02. If this were a 1 on the top, I would say times 1, which is itself, and then divided by. Okay? But this one, in this case, the factor is on top, which means I'm multiplying. Look at your Mo Island. If I'm going from moles to grams, should I be multiplying by the factor or dividing by the factor? Multiplying. multiplying. So every time it says you're multiplying on that mole island, it should be on top. Every time it says you should be dividing by the factor, it should be on the bottom. Does that make sense, everybody? So what is 1.75 times 18.02? Who has a calculator out still? 1.75 times 18.02. So that'd be 31.54, because it's a mass. All of our masses are in two decimals. What unit am I going to put there? What unit was I solving for? Grams. So I'm solving for grams. Now, then I need to have my substance there. From this point on, this is what you guys are going to need to get stuck in your heads. Hashtag U-S. Number, unit, substance. Every time I see a number, I should see the unit and the substance connected to it. Does that make sense, everybody? You just solved your first mole conversion. Homework tonight, pages 10 and 11 from the green packet. you have a question, Anderson? Um, we get that twice if we just took Right, the molar mass and then multiply it by 1.75. Like, do we have to set up the factor? I'm required to teach you proportions. Do I know how to solve math? Yes. Okay. So if you show me work and you show me where the units came from and where, where it canceled, I'm okay with that. Okay. Everybody cool with this? All right, pages 10 and 11 for homework tonight. Have a great night.